Here in most Canadian and American cities, streets are designed for cars and it often feels like there hasn't been any thought put into des designing cities for people not in a car. Well, there's a good chance your city is slowly starting to make improvements, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at some of the projects in Toronto that are turning it into a people's first city. First launched in 2020, Rapid Teo brought 8 kilometers of bus-only lanes to Scarborough. The bus lanes run along the proposed corridor of an Eglinton East LRT, meaning they improve transit on the corridor until Rapid Transit is built. There are also plans for bus lanes on four other busy bus corridors. While not part of the Rapid TO branding, bus lanes and a bi-directional bike path were built on the Esplanade in downtown Toronto a little over a year ago now. Unfortunately, trucks and cars are still found using the bus lanes on the Esplanade, and enforcement of the lanes has been very light. Launched a few years before Rapid TO, the King Street Pilot, which has since been made permanent, brought transit priority to one of the busiest surface transit routes on the continent, in the heart of downtown no less. The King Street Transit Corridor does allow private vehicles to enter for one block so that local traffic can still get through, but streetcars, buses, taxis, and bikes are the only ones allowed through intersections. Not only did streetcars get faster, but the street was also made much nicer with plants bike parking, patios, and more built on what would normally be parking for cars. Launched at the beginning of the pandemic to help local restaurants by giving them more patio space, Cafe Tio allows restaurants to use the curb lanes on streets as patio space, which not only helps the businesses, but also creates a more welcoming atmosphere. The Cabbage Town BIA in the northeast area of downtown has created a natural streetscape along part of the main street. The idea is similar to Cafe Tio, but an execution feels much more permanent, with wooden seating, trees, grass, and other nature being placed into the curb lanes of the roadway. The program invites people to check out more local businesses, stay in the neighborhood, and the trees provide shade and escape from the heat. Also launched during the pandemic, Active TO was started to encourage people to get out, walk, and cycle. Active TO closes roadways during the weekends, which gives more space to cyclists and pedestrians. One of the most popular Active TO corridors is the Lakeshore Boulevard closure, which runs next to the narrow waterfront trail. Toronto's first downtown IKEA opened just a couple months ago. Being just a few minutes walk from two subway stations and several other transit lines makes it easier than ever to bring new furniture home by transit. The location is also along a street with bike lanes, meaning for smaller items, carrying them on a bike is possible, safe, and convenient. Toronto's first protected intersection in the York University campus near Finch West Subway Station, which will also connect to a new light rail line next year, was opened recently. Complete with a raised bike lane and bus bay, protected bike lanes connecting to other cycling connections, such as the multi-use trail under the Hydro Corridor. The intersection also has a pedestrian head start signal, which unfortunately is not timed with the bike signals, but does still provide more safety to pedestrians. Along parts of the bike lanes, plants have been placed between the road and the bike lane. 
One of the best parts of this project is its location. Being so far from downtown, it shows that even the most rural and car-centric places can be transformed into streets for everyone. In the west end of Toronto, two relatively new north-south cycling corridors are being improved. The Shaw Street Contra four lanes were made a couple of years ago and have become a favorite among Toronto cyclists. Along a 2.4 kilometer section, Shaw Contra four lanes have been painted in varying directions. At intersections, bicycle signals are also installed, and sensors at intersections make the lights green when bicycles are detected. A short section near the northern end of the Contra four lanes also features a car-free area, which has planters, a bike lane for each direction, and a bike share TO dock. Even in such a short section, the existence of this shows that we can have better streets, and with so many people using it every day, it also shows that people want to use this infrastructure. A very similar project, known as the Bartlett Havelock Gladstone Cycling Connection, is just a few blocks west of Shaw and builds on what was made on Shaw. While most of it is contraflow lanes, another short section is car free with two bike lanes and a bike share TO dock. One of the intersections in this corridor also has been redesigned to restrict car traffic, but has gaps in the barriers allowing cyclists to continue straight through the intersection. While not new, the city has continued to add more raised bike lanes at bus stops, which makes mooring buses easier and more accessible but also makes riding a bike safer as buses aren't pulling into the bike lanes at stops. Some of these race bus stops were built by filling in the bike lane with more asphalt or using metal platforms. Sherburn in the eastern side of downtown has had raised bike lanes for quite some time now, which means it also has raised bus platforms built into the design from the beginning. Much like the bus platforms found in various parts of the city, the recent extension of the sidewalk in the West End near High Park adds a raised bike lane with mixed with a streetcar platform and a wider sidewalk. Being next to a small parquette and the patios at the coffee shop, the wider sidewalks make the area feel welcoming and like they were designed for people to enjoy. This addition is also right next to Vance's Rails, which already has raised streetcar platform bike lanes in many places. On Winona Drive near Eglinton West, soon to be Cedar Rail Station, parts of the street are nearer than most Toronto streets and also has a contraflow bike lane. More notable are the continuous sidewalks at the intersections of Winona and Ava and Winona and Belvedere. These continuous sidewalks may, might be some of the only ones in Toronto and help make crossing the street a little safer for pedestrians. Both intersections have a fully raised roadway which makes the intersection feel more like a sidewalk than a road for cars. This kind of design slows cars down for two reasons. It uses the same material as sidewalks, in this case concrete, and it acts like a speed bump which for forces drivers to slow down. Over the past few years, pedestrian head start signals have become more common here, with most intersections having them now. These signals give pedestrians a few seconds head start before cars get a green light, which can help prevent turning cars from cutting off pedestrians crossing the street. The one improvement to this that I would suggest is banning right turning during red lights because some drivers still cut off pedestrians when they make right turns during pedestrian head starts. Toronto's bike sharing service, Bike Share TO, has recently increased the number of e-bikes to its fleet, which allows riders to enjoy cycling and using bikes for shorter trips without needing to pedal as hard to go fast. Over the past couple of years, no exit signs have started to be replaced with no exit pedestrian accepted signs to designate when a street ends but a pedestrian pathway continues to a park or path. These signs make it easier for pedestrians to explore streets and neighborhoods.
Painted curb extensions, which have been implemented in many North American cities, are a quick and cost-effective way to make intersections safer by lowering the distance of the crosswalk and forcing cars to make tighter, slower turns. Some painted curb extensions are also paired with flex posts to add a more physical barrier. While I've definitely sugarcoated how good these improvements are, the purpose of this video is to appreciate the good changes that are happening to Toronto and many other North American cities. I'll likely link some of the advocacy projects trying to improve the city even more in the description. Thanks for watching.